Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chattington TTV and I have another video game here for you today. So, uh, I liked the flow of the last video that I did and it was, it was like kind of like based off of, uh, a zombie apocalypse. Um, it was free to play on Steam and so, uh, I decided to go back onto Steam and kind of scroll through their free games list and I found this one. It is called Stories of Ukraine and basically... I don't know if it's a game you play. I know that it was, uh, it's a bunch of visual art and it's a story. And so I thought, and it was free to play again. So I thought it would be cool to go ahead and uh, see what this one was about. So as you can see, the Ukrainian flag. Uh, and for those of you that don't know, uh, there obviously is a big war that's being fought over in Ukraine, uh, Ukraine versus Russia. And so I think this is what this is based off of. So. Uh, again, I watch this with respect for those on both sides that have lost their lives in this conflict. Uh, but uh, hopefully, there's something interesting that can be taken away. Sources. Okie dokie. Uh, new game. Hostomol Bucha Maripol. Uh, Hostomol. Evening in, Friday, in February. Oleski. It was barely past 1700, but it was getting dark already. Spring was on its way, but we were still getting early sunsets and cold nights. Another quiet evening in the house that we, that was utterly, entirely too big for just me and the Lilia. Ever since our daughter had settled in Kiev, no surprises there. Hostomo was always too small for her. Still, I, she kept in touch with us. In fact, that evening I was trying to figure out how a present from her I uh, figured out a present from her a smartphone well I wasn't trying anymore I delegated the task to the neighbor's girl Melania Marzo Marzoyan ah smartphone old man trying to figure out the smartphone why would you do that <laughs> all right give the task to the next door neighbor I see I like this artwork by the way it's cool I mean like just all the designs and everything Melania was a bright girl, top of her class at the medical university in Kiev, much younger than my own daughter, Katya, uh, barely in her 20s, quick-witted and full of life. Unlike me, a tired old man. I've been an aviation en engineer for 40 years before retiring, and yet these modern gadgets are beyond anything I've worked with. Now, my wife, Lilia, is the savvy one, but that evening she was preoccupied. Lilia, I'm assuming is his wife. Is that Putin? That is Putin right there. Oleski, she said in a, wor in a, in a worried voice. Oleski. Oleski. I think that's how you pronounce it. Have you heard about what Putin is saying? He recognized, he recognized those re republics in Donbass. She clutched at her chest. Oh, the, oh God, the Russians are going to invade. I looked over to see her watching a Russian broadcast on YouTube. And I could only roll my eyes. For the last few weeks, what Putin was saying was everyone's favorite gossip. What a big war was coming. That a big war was coming. That the Russians were finally going to invade in full force. That's why Millennia left Kiev a day ago. And came to join her parents in Hostemel. Ah, sounds like, sounds like this is pretty modern, I guess. Many people fled to the capital in the last few days. It was as if everybody expected Kiev to be bombed off the face of the earth. Lily, please, nothing's gonna happen, I said. When I caught Millennia's glance, she was afraid too. Millennia, okay, this is the daughter. Mr. Boris, no, this is the neighbor, I think? I don't know. Mr. Borisov, they've got t t so many troops on our borders, they wouldn't keep them... They couldn't. They wouldn't keep them there if they were just bluffing. That's exactly how bluff works. How bluff works, child. I chuckled. We have nothing to fear because the right time for the attack has passed. Putin will try to annex Donbass at most. If Putin invades, the UN will eat him alive. He doesn't nearly have enough forces. Okay, so this is kind of like. I bet you this is a game that's kind of like a telltale game. That's like kind of tailored by the choices and just and the things you say the decisions you make so if this is the case we're gonna we're gonna base it off that it's gonna be it's gonna be hmm, 
The UN will eat them alive. Sanctions, sanctions. The last time the Russians invaded, the UN put sanctions on them. If Putin invades now, the new sanctions will do him in. I tried giving the girls a reassuring smile. In retrospect, it may have looked a little smug. The kitchen. You know, at least I took first aid courses and stocked us up on some gauze. That'll be useful, right, darling? She looked at Melania, who replied with an enthusiastic nodding. You could have done something useful. You could have done use. You could have done something useful as well instead of buying more model planes. I just chuckled. I could tell she was just worried. I didn't mean it one bit. Look, if you're so worried, I'll go get the car fueled up. Say on Thursday. We weren't using our car much, ex except to buy groceries. So the near-empty tank didn't seem like an issue. With my bum leg, I barely left the home anyways, and Lilia worked as a teacher. Her students were all on distant learning. Then we'll go have a vacation in... Carpathians. Carpathians. I don't know how to pronounce that. A week. No, two weeks until this whole deal resolves itself, and you'll see I was right. Y you were wrong. Stocking up on fuel is a good idea, Melania chimed in. My dad is stocking up as well, before the prices rise even more. So he, she is the neighbor. She is the neighbor. I nodded. I didn't believe war was coming, and if I did, could I do anything to prevent it? But there was something I could do. Help everyone stay calm. Yeah, that's the best thing you can do in a scenario like this, is just to keep everyone calm. Like, I think a big, one of the biggest problems when anything, like, massive happens. Obviously, panic and hysteria sets in. Um, I mean, I can't speak from first-hand experience, but this is just how I imagine it. Like, I mean, with the whole uh, the 19 pandemic, right? Was everybody freaked out, bought everything out. So, they're basically, all the shelves and everything was empty. And... And basically everything it's almost descended into chaos i mean it's followed by the riots and everything so oh uh, yeah the best thing to do is to stay calm lilia millennium mood one to two wait i don't know what that is first day of war or the sea there was a deafening noise outside, wrestling me from sleep instantly. At first, I didn't believe my own ears. I thought I hadn't woken up at all, and it was all a nightmare. But then I heard the noise again. Explosions. Oh, oh look at that. The helicopters. Oh, God. Loosha. The, they're bombing the airfield. Look, those helicopters are shooting rockets. Oliski. I looked around and saw my wife. She was already running towards the window. Did she hear it first? She was always the quicker thinker between us two. After a night of sleep, stepping into my, on my bum leg felt even worse than usual. I limped towards Lily and looked into the window. I didn't have the eyesight to make out the details, but I saw helicopters swarming the hospital airfield, launching bright flares all around them. Not rockets, flares. They do it to our soldiers so they don't shoot them down. They do it so our soldiers don't shoot them down. They're fixing to deploy the airborne troops. Lily covered her mouth with her hands and looked at me. I don't think I've ever seen her so confused and scared. Pack our things. She, we might have to leave the town. Well, naturally, if you can see helicopters, like, shooting down an airfield, like, from your house window, I would say it's probably best to leave town. Uh, as my wife ran around the house packing everything up, uh, Packing up everything of value, I was trying to process what was happening. The war had begun. I had seen it with my own eyes, but I still couldn't comprehend it. I was so convinced that the Russians would never act upon their threats. What a fool I've been. Never underestimate your enemy. There was a gunfire there was gunfire coming from the airfield. It snapped me back to reality. I had to do something. When I went to go check up on Lily, I saw her hands were shaking. I had to calm her down, or at least make sure she didn't forget to pack every anything important. On the other hand, I never got around to refueling a car, and only had enough petrol to drive to the nearest fuel station. Alright. Ask neighbors for gasoline, help Lily pack up, comfort Lily. Mm. Okay, so like down here, there's consequences. Like I said, it's kind of tailored to how you play it. So we must, uh, if we help Lily pack up, Lily's mood... 
Negative three will now be three, but medicine plus one will now be zero. I don't understand how that concept works, but okay. I'm gonna base it off of a moral compass. So, and if I were in that situation, I would not ask the neighbors for gasoline. I would just help her pack, her, pack the stuff up. With a sigh, I joined in Lily and packing up our things. We couldn't afford to forget anything as if we didn't, as we didn't know where we'd eventually end up and if getting supplies would be a problem. We talked very little. I felt an enormous shame for claiming just a few days ago that the war wasn't coming. Lily didn't accuse me of it, but I only felt worse because of it. And I would have liked, I would have liked to her to, I would have liked to her to state the obvious that, that I was being a big damned fool. But no, we were done. When we were done, she just sat on her bed, on the bed. Her hands wrapped around her soldiers, sold shoulders and stared out the window. Dang, I cannot articulate words today. <laughs> As I checked my bags, I noticed that we didn't pack our med kit. Without telling Lily anything, I just quietly went to the kitchen and received our medicine. That should be all. I put my hand on my wife's shoulder. The shooting outside had quieted down and everything seemed to be normal again. But it didn't stay that way. Come evening, the shooting around us got so loud, leaving by car seemed to be suicide. Our only option was to wait for the president's address and hope that the situation gets clearer before the weekend. All right. So Aliski's mood went down to two and the medicine went up to one. Oh, look at the, look at the couple. Oliski, what will we do? Lilia complained. Sniffling away the last of her tears. Did you hear it? Did you hear how loud it was? How terrible? I nodded and hugged Lilia closer. I sure heard it. Around 3 a.m. When we were sleeping in basement, in the basement, a shell hit our house. I don't know what it was, but it shook the whole place. Wait, a shell hit their house? Wow. I was calling around and looking for my cane, wondering if we should stay put or run while Lily was covering her ears and screaming. Then, when we were sure the walls weren't stunt tumbling down on us, she started crying. This would all be over soon, I hope. But at that time, but at that time, all I could do was hold her close. The neighbors, David. Okay, so their house got messed up. The very next morning, when the fighting had quieted down, I heard a knock on our basement door. Our neighbors had come in to, had come to visit us. The whole. Amazonian family, Melania and her parents. Oliski, Lilia, David, the father of David, the father of the family, walked up to me and firmly shook my hand. How are you two doing? Are you all right? We saw your house get hit. Got hit. Thank the Almighty, you weren't there. So I'm assuming this is Lilia and Oliski's house. Okay. Oliski, no kidding. I sighed. We have to leave, David. This is getting too dangerous. Hola. David's wife. David's wife, Ola, chimed in. We can't leave. Oliski. Fedor. Fedorich? <laughs> Fedovich? Fedorich. I don't know how to say it. We've spoken with the Territorial Defense Office. They said it's too dangerous. There's already talk about Russian shooting at cars. So. I'm a, so, what I'm getting at is that they're basically trapped. <laughs> I wanted to curse. I couldn't believe that it was what I was hearing. Sure, the war had been going for eight years now, but it was in Donbass, on the edge of the country. Now the Russians were taking their planes and tanks and bombs all the way up to Kiev. I shook my head. Tell me, did they take the Antov airport? If they did, if they did, the road to Kiev would be wide open. We'd be seeing thousands, if not tens of thousands of men and vehicles rolling out in the next few days. No, 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 my friend. They didn't. It's it's quite it's quite a story, really. David said, emotioning for his wife and daughter to carry on without him. They brought us some supplies and took them downstairs. David, meanwhile, told me the news. They had yet to make it to the TV, but the gossip had already spread around town. The Russians took the Antov airport, but it's all shelled to bits, unusable. They won't be landing anything there or using any of our planes. I gasped, and David cut himself up. And David cut himself off. He didn't need to continue. Maria, Miria, too? Is it gone? I've worked for the Antov Design Bureau for 40 years. Aviation was my life. Still is. However little 
However, little of that life is left in me, and nothing of the Antov Bureau ever made came even close to N225 Miria. Okay, okay, okay. Hold up. I gotta stop for a second. <laughs> so, Oleski worked for the Bureau of the Aviation, for Aviation Design, for 40 years. And so what what does this mean? And nothing to the Antov Bureau ever made came even close to An-225. The, oh, oh, it's a plane. I can just read the rest of the sentence. The biggest cargo plane ever designed. A marvel of engineering. Soviet, Ukrainian, it didn't matter. Mira was a treasure. Okay, so... Basically, he's curious if the big, the big plane... The biggest cargo plane ever designed was destroyed in the shelling. He's just curious. Because... He helped develop it, I'm assuming. Develop it, I'm assuming. I thought it was a terrible waste that it was barely flown in our three decades of independence. But that but that day I learned of a true true truly terrible waste. Oh ho ho! He's got the juice! David. I feel felt a sting in my chest and clutched at it. David quickly rushed to support me. He helped me sit down on the ground. I I couldn't talk at first, so he continued. What a rotten world, huh? I told my girl to wait out wait out the war in Hostomol if it came, and now the war has come here. We reached in, he reached into his jacket center pocket, and before I knew it, there was a bottle in his hand. I was appalled at first, drinking at this time, drinking at a time like this, but David kept talking. Nothing is scare, sacred to these Russians. Destroying Maria is bad enough, but you know what they do? But do you know what they do to women if the Russians get here? If they do, I couldn't call my girls down, and I couldn't protect, I can't protect, I can't call my girls down, and I can't protect them either. I don't even have a gun. He reached to the uncorked bottle, drawing my attention to it. It was the finest Armenian cognac money. It's, it was the finest Armenian cognac money could buy. Okay, so he's got a bottle of alcohol right here. You know, makes sense. In war times, everybody's stressed. They don't know what to do. And sometimes, just like everybody has their vices, this happens to be one of them. All right, fine. Let's go to your place. Save the bottle for a better time. Maybe let's gather everyone for a drink. So everybody's mood would be lifted. Okay. I don't know. I think that like, I think raising everyone's spirits in a time like this would be, is like crucial. But at the same time, like I, ugh. It's probably not the smartest thing to do. Alright, the truth is, I needed my spirits lifted too. We agreed to be quick and went to the Mazinian's place. The cognac was magnificent. It only took a few shots for us to feel happier, warmer, and about ten years younger. Then suddenly, we were barged in on. Okay, so this. Oliski, what are you doing? And you, David, did you put him onto it? Put him up to it? Lilia shook his head in dis disapproval and disbelief. She is the sweetest woman I've ever met, but back then, towering over us, she was tower. She was terrifying. Still, David and Man David and I managed to calm ourselves a little, even if our means of doing so were not the wisest. Yeah. See, that's why I was like, I was like, I don't think, I don't think everybody else would be down to drink. Definitely not Lilia. Oliski, he's a party man. He's a party man. The day drew to us. The day drew too close to a close. Me and David were parting ways just before the curfew shots were already ringing out somewhat far the night like the one before was going to get loud suddenly there was sound of approaching vehicles david what do you know our armed forces are finally what do you know our armed forces have finally arrived david asked looking out onto the road then his face dropped as the armored vehicles rolled down the road we could see the bright z's painted on them Z's, that's Russian. That's Russia. That is Russia. Oh. Okay, so I just brought it up to uh, the Russians. Oliski, it has been a week since the war had begun. Just a week, an entire week. Time seemed to have slowed down, and every new day that came seemed longer than the last. Deep inside, my fear was growing fear for myself, my family, my home, my country. Fear for the future. Fear for the future. 
We heard bombs exploding outside. I wonder if the next one would hit us and if we'd survive it. This constant wait for death left us with, ni with neither energy nor willingness to do anything. We all did... All we did was keep checking the news. I don't know what we wanted to see there, as good news were in short supply. But any new information served to distract us from the horrors around us. That's what we were doing. Sitting in our basement with my phone when my phone rang, me and Lily flinched from the sound. The happy melody of our daughter picked up for the for the ringtone surrounded terribly out of place. Sacrilegious even if even. David, it was David, our neighbor. Oliski, hide your phone. The Russians are going around town, taking them away. He hung up and quickly hit I he hung up and I quickly hid the phone under the floorboards. David's timing was impeccable. Upstairs in our house we heard a loud crash and heavy footsteps. The Russians broke into our home. We turned off the light, leaving me and Lily in total darkness and listened. Loyosha, what do we do? Lily whispered. Lily whispered. I heard growing panic in her voice. In the dark, I found her hand and squeezed it. Let's be quiet. Maybe they'll leave us alone. Corporal. We weren't so lucky. In a few moments, someone knocked on the basement door. It was a heavy, heavy sound. But then it must have been kick knocking with the rifles. But open up quick or we're breaking the door. Oliski. I didn't want to let the Russians in, but I didn't want to antagonize armed men either. We had to turn on the lights and open the door. Three Russian men descended into the basement. They were armed and looked ready to use weapons at the drop of a hat. Lily backed away from them, and so did I, using a wall for support. One of the soldiers noticed my limp. What's, the he what's wrong with your leg, old man? He must have thought it was a combat wound. Hurts to step on an old injury. Spent half my life with a cane. He nodded and looked around the basement. We're searching the houses, looking for Nazis and saboteurs. Do you know any Nazis in the city? Okay, so. At this point, the Russians obviously have invaded. Oliski and Lilia have to hide their phones because they're afraid of them getting taken away by the Russians. And the Russians have come into their house and they're looking for supposed Nazis, right? So... There's, realistically, there's no Nazis there, right? And they don't believe, they don't actually believe their own propaganda. The Russians' words were terrifying and hysterical at the same time. Nazis here? Were they really so brainwashed by the t television? Come on, don't believe everything you're told. There's no Nazis in Ukraine. They, they tell you this so you feel like you're fighting the good fight. I cut myself off when I saw the Russian commander's eyes. In hindsight, now that they were in Ukraine with the weapons and tanks, it was too late to try to talk some sense into them. You talk too much. It's a bit suspicious if you ask me. He pointed the gun at me and gave his soldiers an order. Take this one with with us. He looks like, looks like we found a Nazi collaborator. Oh, okay. So I, <laughs> I, yeah, I messed that up. Okay, so... Well, he's an old man, dude. Like, I, I mean, I guess. Like... It, if you know nothing about this family and this about this man and his background and his history, I guess it's safe to assume that you're if you're looking for Nazis, you're gonna assume that it's him. He, I went pale in the face. Lydia rushed towards the soldiers, pleading them for them to leave me alone. But the they pointed, but they shoved her away. One of the Russians pointed his gun at my head, and the others grabbed me by the shoulder and dragged me upstairs. He walked fast, but and I had to try and keep up regardless of the pain. But on the stairs, my bum leg failed me, and I collapsed. Lilia, please leave him alone. Can't you see he can barely walk? Corporal, the soldier stopped and looked at the commander for further orders. And he thought it was a fine. Uh, I thought uh, he thought about it for a moment, then waved his hand. Fine, leave him be. With a leg like that, he's dangerous. I'm the queen of fucking. If he with the leg, if he's dangerous, I'm the queen of fucking England. <laughs> he looked at us. You two stay inside while we work. Show your face outside, and you're getting shot. Okay. When they left us, Lily rushed towards me. I had barely gotten up when she gave me a tight hug. Loyosa, what's gotten into you? What if they did to take you with them? I know you're brave, but please don't be a fool. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. He kind of was. Well, I kind of was, but I'm blaming it. I'm blaming it on him. He shouldn't have said those things. All right, so the mood went down to two. So their their mood is basically
basically crashed into the ground. Under fire. There was still fighting, but only on the outskirts. Lily had gotten never gotten used to it, but I did. There was there was there is still fighting. There is some there there is still fighting was something I kept telling myself as I saw the rushes rummage through the houses on our street. A unit of Chechens, Kataradavites, Chechens, as they were called, even dropped by a wreck of a house. There wasn't much to steal, but they stole it anyway. Me and Lily had enough sense to not argue, and so they just took what they wanted and left. The Marzonians' turn hadn't come yet, but they knew that they wouldn't be so lucky. That's why... Okay, this is the basement door. That's why I couldn't refuse David when he asked that his daughter stay with us for a couple of days. And me and Lily were a, f were a tired old couple and with my leg. I wasn't much of a threat. The Russians were done with us. Thank you so much, Aliski. These people are monsters. David shared as Lily helped Millennia make, their, make her way into our basement. Have you heard the word around town? Of course I had. The Russians took whatever they wanted. They ate every, anything they could have eaten, drank anything that they could have drank, and took anything that they could resell back home. I wasn't born yesterday. I expected as much. It was war, and I could accept it. But what they did to women, I refused to accept. Make sure you don't want... Are you sure you don't want to join us in the... With Ola, Olha? We'll make room, I offered. David. He shook his head. No, Federich. You just keep Millennia hidden for a few days, okay? Me and Ola will manage somehow. We'll keep real quiet. He put his finger to his lips and smiled. He smiled. I smiled back at him. And as he walked around, walked onto the street, I waved him goodbye. Oliski, there was a pop, like a firecracker going off in the distance. David fell to the ground. He screamed. What I did next, I could, I could never be proud of. I threw myself towards the basement entrance and slammed the do door shut. Downstairs, downstairs, Lily helped. With at the loud yelped at the loud bang, my chest began to hurt, and I clutched it with one hand. A second distant pop, the screaming stopped. I think I waited for hours, and Millennia, Millennia was downstairs, covering her mouth and looking at me horror, looking with David's David's eyes. I think I waited for hours. Okay, Whew. take a break. Take a break. Let me kind of explain it, right? So, the Russians came in, tried to take Olitsky because they thought he was a Nazi collaborator. And from there, basically, they realized that he wasn't a threat, really, because he's basically disabled. So they left him. David brings his daughter over, asks for them to keep him safe. And in the midst of that happening, I'm assuming David's got shot. So I'm assuming that David might be dead. Possibly. Yep, he is. Yeah. Finally, I peeked around the corner, slow and careful, making no sound. There was David, all right. And the two Russians, one standing over David and another rifling through his, through his pockets. And what did you do that for, Corporal? And what did you do, do that for, the standing standing one? Or even. He was a Nazi, can't you tell? I know them when I see them, the other shrugged in the dark. He was not being serious. I could hear him grin. They laughed, then they both lit themselves a cigarette. So they basically just killed David for no fucking reason. Cool. As I closed the basement door and kept it closed through the night, Millennia cried for hours. Lily held her hand and did her best not to cry too. But in the morning, she too joined in when they heard Ola wailing outside, fighting on the outskirts again, but closer to us. Sometimes bullets whizzed through the air right above our fence. When I opened the door to the basement, Ola crawled towards us from all fours. But something had to be done about David. Okay. All right, so we can go bury David, or we don't bury David, and we just stay tight. Realistically, if they're shooting on sight and they don't care, I would say just staying indoors is probably going to be the best thing. Like, so, uh -huh. I told everyone to stay put. We didn't even see who was shooting. If we stayed outside, we'd only join David in death. Okay, so his so his wife agrees. His wife agrees. Poor David. R.I.P. the homie. Oha refused. They took our shovel and went to get David off the road. She failed. The air would get too hot. The shots too loud. And all she could do was press herself 
to the ground, frozen with fear. In tears again, I had to go back. She had, in tears again, she had to go back. There was nothing we could do. We had to believe it, whether it was true or not. I hoped that eventually we could do something about David, but the days were only getting longer. Okay, so basically everyone's mood has gone down to zero. Melania loses hope. The event, this event was caused by your previous actions. See, I told you! But Melania, come on. You just gotta be happy, bro. Actually, you can't really be happy because you're your dad just died and it makes sense all right so now she has lost all hope millennia wasn't looking good news was getting harder to come by and everybody staying home and, and mobile connection failing us more often than not but anytime we got the news it was all worse than before Lily and Olhal could barely calm her down, and when they got together, they'd only magnify each other's fear. They all knew if the Russians came for us, they would hardly be anything. They, they would hardly be anything we could do about it. And even if I had a weapon, I was a tired old man. Nobody expected me to fight the entire Russian army. Yeah, you probably wouldn't be able to fight the entire Russian army by yourself. Okay, so everybody's mood is like zero. Every, everybody's super sad, dude. Every, everybody's super sad. One... Okay. One night, we all woke up hearing Russian vehicles moving on the road above. Even after they passed, passed us, Melania couldn't sleep. She was afraid to move or even breathe. I had to distract her somehow. We could set up a cozy tea party, right? Offered a drink to calm her nerves, so we're basically going to give alcohol to a minor, which is not okay. I talked to her all night. If I was in this situation, and this little girl's freaking out, and my wife is freaking out, and his mom, her mom is freaking out, right? I think the best thing to do instead of talking, get everyone together. So, oh, I can't do that. I guess I gotta do that one. Cool, I guess. I didn't have a choice in the matter, okay? I settled on the corner next to Melania and tried to get her to talk. It was going slow. It was slow going at first. But I suppose I was non-threatening enough that she started to open up. She started she told me about how much she hated the Russians and how much they took from her family already. She told me how much she missed her father. How, when she was little, he tried his best to keep her from finding out about death. Whenever her pets disappeared, it was because they made some miraculous escape to, hamst to the hamster land, or rabbit land, wherever they'd be happier. She was right. David was a good man, and he didn't deserve what happened to him, not one bit. When she cried, I hugged her, and did my best not to join him. Eventually, Millennia fell asleep. I covered her up. The best I could and tried to rise to my feet, but it, but couldn't. I had too little strength. I had too little strength left in me. Eventually, I drifted to sleep on the floor. Next morning, my back was not thankful for it. Yeah, you, you, you sleeping on the floor. Oof. In the end, I managed to shield Melania from the war a little bit. That's what mattered. Okay, so they're moved right back up. They're no longer sad and depressed. Come on, people. Oh, loses hope. Why is everyone losing hope? This event was caused by your previous actions, of course. Because everything I do is just wrong. Oha will never be. Oha will never be satisfied. Oliski, Oha Missourian was devastated. She moved around the basement like a shadow. When we gathered for dinner, she barely ate. She loved David, dear, David dearly. Losing him was too heavy for her would think so millennia couldn't help too couldn't help she too couldn't find any justice in what happened and whenever lilia tried to help she would get too worried about losing me the same way i had to step in and distract olha somehow i can't choose these ones because they're gray i didn't know what to say so instead i listened sometimes olha cried so hard i could barely understand what she was saying so i did my best to hug her and not join in david was a good friend to me, too. 
he was a good friend to everyone. Over the years, he came to think of himself as Ukrainian, but the Armenian, but with Armenian roots, he would always say that he was born in Armenia. But he died in Ukraine. Olha wailed as she recalled this. The Russians would pay, I said, and I hoped to God that Ola wouldn't didn't ask exactly how they were going to pay. So I told her that eventually our armed forces would beat them back until they were all back in Russia, where their hateful poison could reach no one but themselves. Our boys learned how to fight learned how to fight over the last eight years soon they turned the tide i wasn't convinced but luckily i was convincing mm. finally oha began to calm down i felt so proud okay so liski's mood is now zero but oha's mood is now two okay so again Someone loses hope. Why are you losing hope, bro? I don't understand. <sighs> All right. I hope that my... I took my hope a while. It took my hope a while to erode, but when it did, there was no going back. At first, they promised that the war would last for three days, then a week, un then until the next weekend. Then the Russians took Hosmo, and they were already shelling Kiev. Like David predicted, this was all going to be over soon. But not in the way we expected. I just knew it would be. I just knew it. The end with the Zelensky dead. It would end with Liz Zelensky dead. And the population put through filtration camps. And there nobody would care that I am a hero of, of socialist, socialist labor. Olitsky Bor Borisov could not, couldn't go on. Does this mean he's going to die? Die of depression? I don't want him to die. He's a sweet old man. He has been the defining character in this sequel. In this story. Oh, man. The Borisov family died with the city. The story ended. You might want to replay it to see a different outcome. I think that will be a different video. Um, I mean, it's kind of sad. I mean, it's the reality of war. It really is. Alrighty, guys. Thank you for joining me for this video. This was just a little kind of story. Uh, I thought I saw it on Steam. It was free. I thought it was kind of cool. There's going to be two more parts. It looks like there's going to be... There's, uh, yeah, it looks like there's two different stories here. So uh, we played Hostomo. I think next we're going to do Bucha. Um, but yeah, like I said, thank you for joining me for this video. Small little announcement about the giveaway. So yesterday I made a video about how I wanted the goal to be 60 subscribers. We are 60, sitting at 67 subscribers. Like, dude, you guys are not giving me a chance to do this. So after this, I'll be going to go ahead and pick up the Amazon gift cards. I've already got two people entered for the giveaway. Uh, make sure you guys comment on this one and the last one that you subscribed. Uh, make sure you guys smash the like button. It really helps me out and uh, keeps me doing this. Prepared for the next story and uh, that'll be it for tonight. Catch you guys later.